Welcome to the African Album Review Podcast, where we review Africa's best and latest music projects. Africa, Moody say. My name is M. Jomoto, and in the next few minutes, I'm going to give you a rundown of 20th Days Before Maud by Usmaman. The clock starts now. The latest African album review is... Morning. The intro song to 20th Days Before Maud, which is titled The Culture, genuinely felt like a full song until it abruptly stopped on one minute and seven seconds. This caught me unawares as I simply had put the album on play without as much as looking at any other detail such as the features, track length, etc. And ironically, this is pretty much the same thing that happened on the next song, Upet, alongside Slim Ego and OK Malung Kukat. So I really found that interesting, if I should say so. And up to this point, I wasn't sure what exactly I would get. And of course, in comes track three with Youngster CPT, who never, ever misses. And uh, Discounts continues that streak. Youngster CPT gives us an easy to follow chorus on a bouncy beat that Usmamani rides effortlessly. And I know this one might do some damage. The song many of you might know from this album is Check, which is one of the biggest hip hop hits South Africa has seen in recent times. The kind that has had many people saying Usmamani got next, and it's not hard to see why. In the context of this album, the way Usmamane utilizes gapless playback between Check and the next track titled Bank with Anati and Tony Daimani was a chef's kiss. On that note, Usmamane and Tony Daimani are no strangers to teaming up on hits either, having given the culture the banger Ifilimu back in early 2023. Back to this gapless playback Shandis, you don't realize that check is finished until you actually check the track list. See what I did there? So anyway, it feels like Bank is simply an extension of check. Ah, it's too much, man. It's too much. Other singles leading up to this debut are Star and most recently Biggest Culture, which has a video on YouTube and I'll describe this as the hardcore hip hop head song. With the singles, we saw three different styles. The banger, the emotional uh, heartstring tugger, and the hip-hop lover's song, which is the hip-hop head song. This was a great strategy by Usmamane and his team to gauge where his audience places him and how receptive they are to different vibes. When I follow uh, the track list, between tracks 4 and 5 is where he went more melodic in many ways, then went rogue to the banger side for a bit and came back to the more melodious stuff on Uvalo with Java, went back to the bangers and then took it back again. Usmamane challenged himself vocally on the song with Java uh, to evoke more of that emotion and I suspect this song could be the sleeper hit of this album. Not the one you'd instantly pick, but it could well be the one that endears itself to the core fans of both camps and has really long replay value, like people are going to be repeating this one. For much the same reasoning, the last track on the album, Kude, has every chance of being a fan favorite. The sing-along in the shower or while cleaning your room type of record where Usmamane challenges himself vocally again. One of the biggest questions I had on this album is how on earth did Usmamane manage to get such top tier talent on his project? He is very much considered newer to the scene, but the collabs he secured were absolutely stellar. From KO, the former tear gas and cash time legend, Stjava, Youngster CPT, Teleman, Anati, Mash Beats, Okmalum Kukat, 
ish, man. Anybody in South African hip hop would be hyped to get such a cast on their project. And these are my 2000s, they Ah, they're moving nice. They're moving real nice. What I love about 20th Days Before Mount is it really gives us uh, Usmamane's range, uh, which fits within what we already know of him based on the music and more. It's great that this new crop of SA hip hop stars is also very much in tune with delivering their raps in local lingo as much as they can turn on the Americanness and they're like right in the middle. What you end up getting is this unique blend of hip hop you can only really get in South Africa with by try quadlingualism on display. It's crazy. You will not hear anything like it anywhere else. 20th Days Before Maud is a strong debut project that positions Usmamane perfectly for an industry coup. He does one thing really well, combining trap and its infectious energy together with a soulful R&B vibe to make a unique melodious trap blend and you get it with other artists that are really at the top like uh, uh, you know, Blackie, but I think uh, Usmamani is much more on the on the rap side than the melodious side in a way. The launch pad to me is set for Usmamani. Now let's see which of these songs take off and for what reason. It's easy to expect him to give us the next check type song, but he shows that he can give us different flavors, that his fan base will eat right up and that versatility makes him a lethal contender for the leader of the new wave crown in South Africa. SA Hip Hop needed a project like this and here we are. There's a lot to love here for the right niche and honestly the people that are really into SA Hip Hop are probably gonna rate this one anywhere between I think an 8 and a 9 somewhere there. For me I rate 20th Days Before Maud by Usmamane a solid 7.7 .7 out of 10. Fantastic debut, great features, and it makes me want to listen to more from him as he continues to drop uh, some fire music. And by the way, do not forget to visit my website, mjwemoto.com, M-J-W-E-M-O-T-O.com. Check it out. Otherwise, that's it for me. My name is MJ Wemoto, son of Zimbabwe, signing out. Peace. Day and day. This podcast is hosted by MJ.